Are you doing intermittent fasting for a reason? You have a goal that you want to accomplish and you don't want to waste your time. This video talks about how to get faster results with intermittent fasting and how to not waste time with it. Otherwise, you're going to just end up starving yourself for nothing. Starving. Number one, artificial sweeteners. Small amounts of artificial sweeteners like Diet Coke, pre-workout or some stevia in your coffee, they're not going to probably break a fast and they won't interfere with autophagy either. But artificial sweeteners are known to disrupt the microbiome, make you hold onto more water, create sugar cravings and make you addicted to sugar. So in most cases, if you want to be 100% sure, then you would avoid all artificial sweeteners during a fast state. Number two, poor sleep quality. Most of autophagy as well as growth hormone gets released during deep sleep. From a circadian rhythm perspective, that's between 11 p.m. and 2 a.m. If you're fasting in hopes of getting autophagy or more growth hormone, but your sleep quality sucks, then you're just wasting your time. Melatonin, the sleep hormone, is also a powerful antioxidant that clears out the brain from toxins and plaque during the night. It also promotes autophagy. If you expose yourself to blue light at night, you'll inhibit melatonin release while sleeping, which also interferes with autophagy. That's why you should use blue blocking glasses and not look at your smartphone. Number three, binging and fasting. Binge and fast cycles are caused by circadian rhythm misalignments, poor sleep quality, being addicted to artificial sweeteners, being too stressed out, emotional attachment to food, not having a specific goal, restricting yourself for too long and crash dieting. They can also be due to electrolyte imbalances and lack of minerals. To avoid binging, you have to apply discipline and consistency. That's going to engrave better habits into your brain and it's also going to change your decision making. Theoretically, you could maintain a binge and fast cycle for quite a long time and you will even activate autophagy in adequate amounts and you will benefit your health. It's just that it's not a very happy place to live at and it's not very sustainable. Can I have that Milky Way? Number four, not knowing how many calories you're eating. You don't need to weigh everything you put into your mouth for the rest of your life, but you do want to have the ability to eyeball the calorie content of everything and then make your decisions based on that. If you're trying to lose weight, but you haven't made progress in a long while, then chances are you're just eating too many calories. Physiologically, as well as psychologically, is actually much better to commit to a short period of counting all the calories and macros you eat so that you could achieve the goal faster, and then return to a more liberal way of eating. Number five, not stacking hormetic stressors. There are many hormetic stressors that activate the same longevity pathways as intermittent fasting, such as exercise, saunas, and ice baths. They all help with fat loss as well as autophagy. The idea is that you add small amounts of additional stress that cause hormesis, and thus help you to gain the benefits of the fast faster without having to fast that long. Strategery. Number six, antioxidants while fasting. Oxidative stress activates autophagy and NRF2, which promote the body's own antioxidant defense systems and self-repair. Blocking that signal with antioxidants may interfere with the benefits of fasting and hormesis. You don't need to nor should take antioxidants while in a fast state because you're already producing a much more powerful antioxidant defense system which is autophagy and NRF2. You actually need small amounts of oxidative stress to keep the body more resilient and stronger. Number seven, juice fasting. You can definitely lose weight by just drinking juice for a few days, but it's definitely not quality weight loss because you'll probably end up losing more muscle than if you were to do a strict water fast or even a dry fast. Carbohydrates and fruit interfere with autophagy a lot because they're high in sugar, glucose, and fructose. They'll also kick you out of ketosis and make you more catabolic. Drinking some juices that have polyphenols, antioxidants, fiber, electrolytes, and other nutrients is fine when you're eating. You just don't need to nor should do it while fasting. Number eight, not enough sunlight. Autophagy won't begin effectively if you have low vitamin D levels because the autophagosomes won't be manufactured in enough quantity. The vitamin D receptor also regulates autophagy and activating with vitamin D can induce autophagy. A proper circadian rhythm starts with exposure to sunlight in the morning, which will stimulate the master clock inside the brain as well as trigger vitamin D synthesis. All of these hormones and different pathways, they're so interdependent and they need each other to work properly, so you have to look at it as a holistic system. Number nine, not doing resistance training. If you're just fasting with no resistance training, then you're going to end up losing more muscle. That's why you need to balance the catabolic side of fasting with anabolism. Sarcopenia or age-related muscle loss is associated with many diseases and ailments. Older people get hip fractures, develop diabetes, Alzheimer's and obesity because of physical inactivity and lack of lean muscle. No matter how old you are, you should keep resistance training as a regular staple in your routine.
To know how to optimize your fasting schedule, workout routine, meal timing, food combining, and autophagy, then check out my book, Metabolic Autophagy. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.